Hello everyone and welcome back to our witness channel and our little Bitcoin experience and experiment. So today there is a question to answer. Why is the Bitcoin still standing? Many of you might have watched over the last few days how the market developed and many of you were, might be thinking, why has the Bitcoin not crashed yet? Why is everything still up pretty high when we compare it to where it has been a year ago? And that is a valid question because if Bitcoin would be a classic financial instrument, it probably would have crashed by now. But Bitcoin isn't. The main answer to the question is Bitcoin isn't leveraged. The main actors in the Bitcoin market put their own hard earned cash in it and don't buy Bitcoin on leverage credit. And there are a few other very important things you might want to consider. So what are the prices for Bitcoin at the moment? So you can see we are looking at Bitcoin at 33,000 ah, Okay, let's say $34,000 at the moment. So it has gained about 10% from its low yesterday, but it has lost about 50% from its peak. But if you look at it over the last 12 months, then it still has gained quite a lot. I don't want to, or we can have a look at the graph. So, over the last 12 months, Bitcoin has still gained considerably. You see, November 29th, it was at 18,000, and the further we go back, the lesser the price was. So. In less than a year, it has tripled. So that is not bad for an investment by all standards and all means. So we are still very happy if we are long-term investors. And that is exactly why Bitcoin hasn't failed. And there is another very good reason for it and that is that the whole financial market is in turmoil. If you look at the earnings to price ratio or price to earnings ratio divided by 10 to make it a little bit more uh, safe then we see levels which have triggered massive corrections in the stock market before. And we can see a price of stocks which is far above historically safe levels. So if you have to make a decision at the moment which is the safest bet to buy then you're probably not choosing stocks and there are a few other things it looks a bit like a orchestrated compa uh, campaign when we look at the main arguments against Bitcoin, there are a lot of uh, 
documents in the market which compare Bitcoin's use of energy not uh, to nations, which is a little bit of a comparing apples and pears, but of other assets in the financial market. And there, Bitcoin's use of energy isn't that bad. And if you watch a few of the videos from uh, some YouTubers who uh, found it in their heart to make videos about Bitcoin over the last few weeks, and uh, especially uh, refer to Bitcoin as being very, very dirty money in the sense of using electricity, that you will find at some point they are referring to Bitcoin's use of uh, renewable energy. And there is especially one YouTuber who uh, makes uh, a lot of waves at the moment and when you look at what he is uh, uh, what he is saying and what he's uh, citing then you find that he cites a document which states in his video if you read the print <laughs> then it states the lowest estimate for bitcoin to use as uh, uh, renewable energy is 39 percent but his uh, text which he uh, his speak is uh, the lowest Bitcoin use of renewable en energy is uh, below 30 and that is what is going on in the market. People bend the facts if they want to and nobody is actually interested in what is going on and the main part isn't that Bitcoin isn't green which is the problem Bitcoin isn't controlled by the central banks, and that is the problem for the market. Because there is another problem, and that is, when you look at it, how, where we are, is we have a completely out-leveraged market. This market is completely over-leveraged. And that is due to the uh, reserve banks printing money as fast as they can. The problem with printing money is not only that money isn't scarce anymore, which means in economics that it uses its uh, role as leading indicator of the financial markets. So as long as money is scarce, that, uh, then it can dictate the the terms of trade. But if you print money on an industrial scale, then you d make it available, readily available, and then other factors take over. So the main problem with printing money is that you uh, extend the balance sheets of banks, which allows them to hand out ever more credit and that means that money is extremely and extraordinarily abundant. So what is happening <laughs> is uh, the central bank is buying government bonds because nobody else is going to buy them because they are basically junk. The public doesn't believe in the governments being able to pay back their debts at any point in time. So the central banks have to step in and
and buy government bonds. And those government bonds are stored or are actually bought by banks and then given into the central bank's coffers to as a collateral against credit. And that means that the banks give out ever more credit against a collateral which is basically worthless. So what you see at the moment is stocks are bought with credit which is secured by government bonds which are worthless. So overpriced stocks are bought with credit which is basically which is based on uh, no collateral at all. And that means that it is a huge casino. And usually that would be corrected with by counter indicators, which would be metals, gold and silver. But unfortunately, the gold and silver mark is rigged as well because due to gold and silver certificates the banks have found a way or some of the banks have found a way which is also backed up by the central banks uh, to manipulate the gold and silver market by just selling non-existing gold and silver in the market whenever they want to and thereby controlling the price for gold and silver. So whenever the gold or silver market ex exceeds a certain level, the banks will just, the bullion banks will just sell gold and silver they don't have until the price is down and then they will close their short positions on the uh, lower price. And that is possible because they are allowed to do so. There's no, there's no regulation in place which forbids them to do exactly what they do. And that is why the gold and silver price has been detached from inflation for a number of years now because it threatens the value of the currencies. Because if you can't buy gold and silver with your dollar anymore, then you might consider the dollar worthless as well. And that would make a run on the banks. So there's a valid point in not to allow this, but on the other hand, it only extends the period until the pain really bites. So at the moment we are in a market where all the assets are under pressure because the banks are fighting their fight against <coughs> the devaluation of the classic assets against the new cryptocurrencies and uh, all the members and players in the casino they know that their time has come because in a few weeks time we will see how inflation feeds into the market. We will have the first half of the year gone and then there will be a reckoning about what is going on on the price front. They might change a few indicators in the uh, basket for goods and services to uh, make inflation seem lower than it is, but uh, the overall experience will be that inflation is around about the 7 to 8 percent. Fair guess, because uh, oil alone has risen by 10 percent over the last six weeks. And there are a few other indicators which make it very obvious that the inflation rate will be about 7 to 8% in real terms, and that is 
far above any corridor. And that's only the start. The world economic has not even picked up pace yet. And if you look at the commodity markets today, you can see that basically all commodities are in the green. There is only a very, very few exceptions. And this trend will continue. We will see more and more people switching from the standard, from the old economics, from the leverage market of stocks and government bonds to, yeah, things were, which they consider more stable than the classic financial instruments and that will be one of them will be Bitcoin as well. So that is might be the reason why we will see another rise in the Bitcoin price. I'm not so sure about that. I'm not advocating it. It is the battle is still open. But what I know for sure is that Archegos will not be the only victim of the leverage because all of the assets, the classical assets, even brick and mortar is overpriced at the moment because of the cheap credit and the abundance of money which is in the market. And we all know it. I mean, there's no, we are all sitting in a, in a train running at 190 miles an hour and there is no brakes. There are no brakes and the train is heading for a wall. Nobody knows the answer. We are all waiting what will happen. The only thing we know is that it isn't working. So there will be some kind of fix. Whoever comes up with a, with a good solution will be in line for the next Nobel Prize. And if it is the classic solution, it will be a pain for the masses. We had a century where oil and steel and yeah, oil and steel and uh, banks ruled the roost and now we are changing into a century where basically food prices data and information will rule the roost and the old money still hasn't found its place in the new world so they have to come up with a solution we will see how it looks like and until they find a solution for that, there's no, there's no actually threat for Bitcoin because the, as I said, Bitcoin is not leveraged. It is the, the pundits actually take the losses. It is not other people's money which takes the losses. It is their own cash which they invest and not uh, other people's money. And that is why they have a very a much better standing in the market than anybody who has leveraged assets. I am sure there is a place for Bitcoin and digital currencies in the market in the future because they will provide a lot of utilization for added value. We are at the same state with uh, Bitcoin or with cryptocurrencies, with which we were in uh, the internet development in the late 90s. Bitcoin is far ahead of its time, but that doesn't mean it's dead. 
So that is my opinion. And yeah, take in that graph and then you know how big the trouble is. Uh, the classic financial markets are in. And then you might want to decide what you do. I mean, it is basically everybody is staring at the at the situation at the moment and whoever moves first loses. So we will see where we go. I am not very optimistic for the next 12 months. I see that there will be some kind of reaction which is hurtful and will have a lot of painful implications for many, many people in the world. And that is really, really sad. And I'm not feeling good about it in any form. We had a complete failure in oversight and regulation over the last 10 years, basically, since the, the banking crisis and yeah, it is like, like an addiction. The banking crisis was the first shot in the arm. And now we are on high, on high levels of uh, narcotics in the financial system. And somehow the, the turkey will come. Good, thanks very much for watching and please like and subscribe if you feel so. It would give us a boost in <coughs> publicizing our content and I hope you are in a position to minimize your losses over the last few weeks. Have a very good day.